Welcome in, Second Cousins, to this interim edition of Court Cousins. It Peach is confused. He doesn't even know what to do. It's the trade deadline. We'll talk about this trade deadline, ladies and gentlemen. And was it, in fact, a dud? Obviously, our Orlando Magic made no moves. So, Peach, I'm going to set the scene for you, and then I'm going to get your thoughts my dashing cousin, if that's okay, sir. Good, because usually you come to me to ask me what to expect on the show. I honestly don't know. <laughs> well, a whole lot of nothing, I guess. Or maybe we can talk about nothing. Let's see, because I, I think there's there's some conversations to be had. If it was truly a bad a dud, a bad trade deadline for the Orlando Magic. And is this, is this basically now our Seinfeld episode? Is that what you're saying? This is a show about nothing? See, I don't see. I'm not. I don't get a Seinfeld reference, though. Oh yeah, okay. Only yeah, one sorry. of the most influential Iconic. comedies of this or any era. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, we get. They gave you shrinkage. You're welcome. All right. It's boom, boom, Other people boom, got boom. It. Yeah, it's it's for the it's for the second cousins out there. I don't know why I didn't get it. That was always on in my household. But um, anyways, back to the trade deadline or the trade deadline. The Orlando Magic, our beloved team, make no moves. Um, at a deadline where many fans were hoping for some addition to some shooting. There were some pie-in-the-sky ideas about an Anthony Simons and getting a piece that would really grow with this franchise. Uh, for me, Peach, I was hoping to maybe get a swap uh, in maybe one position. Uh, just some numbers here for you, Peach. I know you love numbers. You're a numbers guy. Right now on the season, our Orlando Magic are 28th in the league in three-point percentage at 34.8%. We're only ahead of the Wizards and the Spurs, and those are two rebuilding teams. Uh, we are dead last in the league in three-pointers made per game at 10.8. So just looking at that, I mean, we have two studs that we know, surefire guys, and wouldn't it be nice to put some spacing around them it seems to be a clear need, but, but, and maybe this is where the front office is thinking, second cousins out there, in January, sir, we are 18th in the league in three-point percentage at 36.4 and 17th in three-pointers made at 12.4. So that is kind of when our team started to get healthy here in January. Guys started to come back. The rotation started to get filled out. So I guess what I'm trying to say or maybe thinking or positing or just hypothesizing here is that the front office thinks we do have shooting on this team. It was just kind of nicked up. We've got Gary Harris. We've got Joe Ingles. We've got Caleb Houston. Jalen Suggs is becoming a solid shooter from beyond the arc. Paolo was making a big step from beyond the arc this year. Franz can hit it. Wendell Carter Jr. is our best three-point shooter at 42.7% this season. So I just rattled off 10 guys that can shoot the rock. Hypothetically, Cole is supposed to be able to do it, but man, that guy is having a tough tough stretch, so I'm not going to bring him into this. But I guess, Peach, what I'm trying to say is, did was it a bad trade deadline, I mean, for you know not bringing in some shooting, or do we actually have the pieces here and guys are just coming back and the front office thinks, okay, it's here, let's just let it, let the, let it play out. What do, you, what do you think, sir? Well, I guess I'll just try to answer the question you asked versus taking it in the direction I think it actually goes because we, okay. we've got a show to do here, so let's yeah. not end it in two seconds with the actual answer. But uh, I think uh, in this instance, I'm, I am I think they just decided Stan and Pat was better the better move. Like I think sometimes the best move is no move. And I don't necessarily, I personally don't think this is the squad that, that's going to go all the way. I don't think you keep this group together for five years and, you know, contend for a championship, but um, they're just being patient. I'm sure people called, I'm sure there were offers abound, right? Like you mentioned the three point shooting, it is a problem, but like you said, in January, it's improving, right? It's still, not where you, it's not, not top 10 in the league where you'd like to be, but it's improving. It's getting better. So that's, you know, respectable because this is a, a team they don't really expect to contend for a championship this year. We're talking 
hopefully getting a second round like burn. Right, like right, right. so when you're when you're looking at it from that perspective, there's no need to oversell. You know, right. some people probably wanted some of our players on our team, but they probably wanted too much back in return. Mm -hmm. And the Magic are in a place where they don't have to make a move. They don't have aging superstars that are going to be pissed. They don't have bad contracts, really. There's nothing to force their hand to say you had to make a move at this deadline. They were only going to sell if it was a great, great, great deal or an offer. And there really wasn't one that must have come forward to them. And when we look at all the other deals the, around the league, there's nothing else that mind blow is that mind blowing either. I think the only player that was really out there that would have fit what you're talking about here with the three point shooting is yeah. Buddy Heald. We'll talk and about obviously him. that's not a package that worked yeah. out for us that he was going to come here, but. I'm not so sold on all these guys were just injured and that's what the issue is. But I think you are seeing an improvement from the likes of Jalen Suggs and yeah. Caleb Houston and, and uh, now Anthony black as well. So if they're going to continue to improve, that's optimistic. And I think it right. just leads to the, the, we don't need to make a move. I think is probably what they thought because yeah, you know, the improvement is there. Let them improve for another season. We're not trying to win a title this year. We're still a year or two away from like being those really active teams one of those really active teams at the deadline that feels like they need to get that bench piece or that other piece to fill in and right now that's just not us so i'm okay with it yeah no fair points and we'll talk about buddy healed and a couple other specific trades that went down that maybe could have pertained to the orlando magic in just a moment but you know thirty thousand foot view like you said peach what is the goal what's the goal this year playoffs is the goal We've heard it from the front office all the way down. The players are reiterating it. Paulo in interviews, the goal is to get into the playoffs. And playoffs? So, <laughs> and if that's what we're shooting for, well, we're currently in eighth place right now, and we're tied for with the Heat. At, who are in seventh place, but you know they have they just beat us, so they win the series, the season series right now. So they're in seventh because of that tiebreaker, and we're only a half game behind Indy, who did get better, but they're in sixth. You see Philadelphia with Joel Embiid going down with a serious injury; he's going to be out for extended time. I can see them tumbling in the standings until he gets back. So if we're reaching our goal, then like you said, Peach. Don't force a move. I'm sure that they probed. There were, there was chatter. There was some smoke that the Orlando Magic are looking aggressively for a guard. Um, and maybe that's true. Maybe it wasn't. You know our front office plays things tight to the vest, and that's okay. But it, it would make sense that we were looking for a guard to replace. Okay, so... I don't want to get it. I don't want to get into it just yet, but I think we're okay. You know, the goal is playoffs and that's where we are. No need to force things. Now, if I can get nitpicky for a moment, Peach, where I can get depressed sometimes while we didn't make a move is something we've talked a lot about injuries. We've got a lot of guys on this team who sadly have been injury prone and have missed a boatload of games. So, you know, I was looking potentially for an upgrade at guard, like a three-point shooting guard, and maybe an upgrade of a guy with a little bit more durability. So I'm sorry. I love Gary Harris. He's done some good things for this team, but he's been constantly nicked up pretty much since we received him from the Denver Nuggets. That's a spot that I was looking to upgrade in this trade deadline. I didn't expect us to go for the big splash. Let's get Anthony Simons. Let's get the third guy to you know create this Optimus Prime or this uh, you know Megazord and then just go for it. I was expecting like a Gary Harris slot uh, to, to get changed or moved or, you know, maybe mm. something like I wasn't expecting it, like a Moritz Wagner, like someone who's a rotational guy, more likely Gary to get a guy in that can do a lot of the same things Gary does when he's healthy, but can just be healthy more than Gary Harris. Um, you brought up or I brought up Markel Foltz is another conversation that we're going to need to have in the magic community. You know this guy, the red lettuce. I'm the last guy that wants to have this conversation, but we do really need to look ourselves in the mirror and think, like you said, Peach, not right now, but in three to four years when we want this team competing for a championship, hopefully the, the, the former, like three years, can you win an NBA championship with a point guard 
who is turning down 18 footers and out who who does not have a three uh yes to the man from uh vermont no <laughs> i had this conversation i put that out on, on on twitter and someone came up the the only name that was able to come up was rajon rondo and when did the celtics win that was like i was in college man that was 15 mm-hmm. years ago 10 uh, 12 years ago something like that well he he won a title with the lakers as well true but he wasn't a main he wasn't important i mean lebron he james was an was important the point part of court. it he wasn't playing he wasn't ending the games with with the lakers he was the the backup right. point guard he, he played he played a lot in some key minutes i think you should check your, your facts on that okay he, maybe he, he, he he's a guy like a like a schrader right that's right. like a, he's a spark plug and he gets right. things going and he's played a lot of big schrader. games he's played a lot of playoff <laughs> games he's played you know what like he's he's played a lot of games that, that's schroeder. a good, like schroeder how can you not whatever. know it's the german it's the schroeder all right. Well, forgive me, Wagner's. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just, you know, I think uh, I, I just think the, those are the kind of guys that you want to see come in if you're going to go out at the deadline. So, like, yeah. I know, you know, Tyus or what is it? Tyus Jones. Yep. 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 That kid from the. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, OK, great. Right. He seems like he could be that kind of guy, but he hasn't done anything yet. So it's sort of yeah. like well, I kind of was like, well, I guess if it only costs a second round picks, I'm listening, but I'm not stoked about it. Yeah. Like you kind of want to get those guys that like have annoyed you for years on other teams because mm-hmm. they're in guys shorts. They piss you off. You mentioned on our last podcast, Caruso, you right. know, some of those kind of guys that just like, man, they're just a pain in the butt. But mm-hmm. when they're on your team, they make they elevate everyone's play because they're like, hey, if this guy is going to go this hard, I got to go this hard, too. And it's just like, you know, I didn't see a lot of those guys getting shipped around. I mean, you can no. make the Pat Bev argument to the Bucks, but like that guy's a head case. He's a different thing. But yeah, um, I just didn't feel like there, there was one of those guys that that went somewhere else that we could have taken. I think the biggest the biggest felt miss to me would be healed. Uh, just for the three-point shooting aspect, and Let's, maybe if if it only would have cost second-round picks, um, taking a shot on Jones might not have been a bad idea. But let's talk you know, about they've got other plans. Let's talk All about right. Heald because you've brought him up a couple times, um, and that is a guy that is kind of like a Gary Harris replacement. But Heald, the man plays. Okay, he's played over mm-hmm. seventy games in his, yes. his eight-year career. He's played over seventy games um, every year. He's played over 80 games, five of those years. So that's great. 40% from three as a, on his career on 7.7 attempts. I think the near closest guy we have taken that many attempts is probably Jalen Suggs, and he's taken maybe four in between four and five attempts. So we got nobody near that amount of volume with that amount of accuracy from beyond the arc. He's someone that you would have loved to have, maybe not as good a defender as Gary, but still a serviceable defender and what he brings on the offensive floor, plus staying on the floor, that would be an upgrade for me. The problem there, Peach, and the trade was the Sixers get Buddy healed. They send out to the Pacers Furkan Korkmaz, who inspired a holiday in this household, Korkmaz. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. The Pacers also get two second round picks, one from the Raptors, one from the Blazers. Our boy cash considerations. And they ended mm-hmm. up, this was actually a three team trade when it all was said and done. Doug McDermott, Dougie McBuckets from the Spurs. McBuckets. So they get a replacement shooter. The Spurs get Marcus Morris and a second round pick. So I'm not sure exactly where all of those picks came from, but the Sixers essentially had to send out, I think, three second round picks. Cork Maz and Marcus Morris to get Buddy Healed. And this is the risk. He's an unrestricted free agent this offseason. So mm-hmm. you got to figure, just like the Pascal Siakam deal, that, and I heard this on the mismatch, which is quickly becoming my favorite NBA podcast, that there were probably some conversations that Healed wants to play with Embiid, wants to play in Philadelphia and, and rock things out there. And, and maybe our front office didn't get that same inclination from him about Orlando. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to give up, even though we don't use second round picks ever in our franchise very well, I'm sorry, Caleb Houston, no disrespect. I'm sorry, sir. But we've already got a a stacked lineup with all of our first round picks. I'm not convinced that a guy we're going to take in the second is going to start cracking into this lineup. So the second round picks, you know, 
whatever, honestly. If you you can you can have him if you're going to tell me that Buddy Heald is going to come play here and then re-sign. The risk is not re-signing. Um, and I think that's maybe why that deal didn't end up going through. Uh, another trade. This is the one that really puts a bee in my bonnet, sir. This is one gets me worked up because in my article for OrlandoMagicDaily.com about trade targets, I had this man from the Detroit Pistons, Boyan Bogdanovich, and consistent Orlando Magic killer Alec Burks. Just like you said, Ooh. the guy that when we play against them just wants to just drain seven threes on us and have a career night. Alec Burks, right? Those well, are, yeah, but he only plays well against us, though. Right, well, yeah, that's that's the danger. That's <laughs> See, that's what happened to the Sixers. Mo Bamba hits, what, six threes before halftime? And they get fooled, and they take him, and now he's just kind of rotting at the end of their bench, and they're like, shit, they fooled us. And the other man mentioned in this trade, Evan Fournier. The Knicks were like, we have to have him. <laughs> yeah. He destroys us. Exactly. <laughs> have fun, Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> but like when you look at what the Knicks gave up, to get Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks, who's also a good player, but Boyan is the main piece for that for me. Evan Fournier, mm-hmm. a guy who wasn't playing, Malachi Flynn, who really wasn't in their rotation, um, Quentin Grimes, who's a nice young player, but there's a lot of question marks, and a gentleman who I've never even really heard of. I think he's an upcoming prospect, Ryan Arcidiasiano. I think he's Italian, maybe. Maybe he would have been great with Paolo. I don't know, but I've never heard of this gentleman. And then two second-round picks. Like, that's not much of a king's ransom. You're telling me that we couldn't have done Gary Harris, Chuma OKK, uh, a couple second-round picks, and Admiral Schofield or whoever else other end-of-the-bench guy for to the, to the uh, Pistons? Do they really love Quentin Grimes that much? Is that really what got them to do this deal? Okay, well, then give them a third second-round pick. I'm okay with that. Because Boyan is under contract for this year and next year, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm better with giving up a few second round picks, which we never use again. I'm gonna say that again, um, to get a guy like that who is a guaranteed scorer, 20 points per game on 41 percent from three. He can do a little off the dribble. He can erupt for 40 points on a night, like. He's had a couple lumps in the recent years, but he's very durable if you look at the span of his career. He's just a pure scorer. And, I mean, the Knicks are being touted as huge winners in this in this free agency or in this uh, trade deadline, and I think they were, mainly for this deal, which, honestly, I hope the Magic were in these conversations because Boyan is a really good player, and they didn't have to give up really much of anything for him. I don't know. Do you and Bojan need some time alone? I mean, God, I mean, I would not have been excited if he joined our team. I understand he checks some boxes, but he doesn't he doesn't say winning basketball to me. He's never really been on a team that succeeded uh, winning at a high level. So those aren't the kind of guys I like to see what? Come over at the trade deadline. No, he was yeah, on those Utah Jazz not teams that went deep into the playoffs, I'm pretty sure. Oh, the Utah Jazz, they're known for doing good things. You're no. such an asshole. <laughs> you are such <laughs> respect, sir. Respect. Um Yeah, he, he did not some things. Good to stock that a balloon were there. Come on. <laughs> okay. Fair. Fair. But at I least mean, he uh, plays, yeah, man. He's I, played I, games. I, no, I and I get that he checks some boxes. I think right. he'll checks boxes more. But I get right. that you're bringing him up as a he was a guy who was shopped around and did get moved. And obviously, under they didn't contract. really give up much for him. Right. I like Malachi Flynn personally. And I think yeah. they just got him from the Knicks recently because I didn't know he was with the Knicks right. until you put up this graphic. <laughs> um, but, you know, the Pistons, they're just fucking they don't care. They're just like, <laughs> ah, we we don't just. Yeah. We're, we're our bad you know we we forgot to come this year <laughs> our bad you know like so they're just going to restart everything i don't think they're getting much out of that deal to be honest i think they're just That's clearing space <laughs> for what by getting rid of bojan i guess <laughs> I, I don't know they want to lose more games or yeah, they, at this point they're probably just clearing out veterans so that they can try all the young guys and see what they've got i don't know maybe um, maybe they waved I killian I hayes have, <laughs> i wouldn't have loved us getting him even though i get that he adds three-point shooting i i don't know if he would have been the right fit for us he just doesn't i don't know we got got enough we got enough white european guys on our team we're we're good come on let's make the united nations i think 
I think it's an upgrade from Gary Harris. That was the only disappointment for me, really, at the trade deadline. Another guy that you brought up, we have the Dennis Schroeder was on the move. And why not just mm-hmm. unite the German national team? We bring Daniel that, Tice, yeah, get him good. from the Clippers, and we'll just go with his baby. Yeah. Oh, I'm liking the sound <laughs> of that. Could be fun. <laughs> he goes to the Nets with Thaddeus Young for and then to from the Raptors who got Spencer Dinwiddie and then just promptly waived Spencer Dinwiddie. So Right. And you mentioned Cork Moss earlier too and I believe they did not they waived him as well. He's waived as well. So like I, I think they bought him out. Yeah, I don't know. Dennis Schroeder um he's more of a creator. He needs the ball in his hand more. Joe mm-hmm. Ingles has kind of taken the lead with that second unit, and that's kind of fun. I'm hoping Cole Anthony bounces back and continues to have more of the creator responsibility on the second unit. So I don't know if Dennis Schroeder's skill set is really what we're after, 35% three-point shooter, not really an upgrade there. Definitely an upgrade in terms of veteran presence and savvy, and maybe mm-hmm. he could bring a little bit of that, but I mm-hmm. don't think that was an upgrade. Maybe some Magic fans saw that and thought, yeah, let's unite Team Germany, and that could have been cool for Franz and Moritz. But I don't know. You mentioned, Peach, the waivers. Um, I did not know Cork Moss was waived, probably. I just looked up some guys who were waived from um, Spa Track. Spencer Dinwiddie. James Booknight was a guy that uh, I think I and many Magic fans wanted us to take over Franz Wagner in that draft. He's done nothing but get in trouble and be shitty. Um, Frank Nilakina for the Knicks a couple years ago was doing things. Victor Oladipo, baby. Bring him on back. Hobble his ass back here. And then uh, Killian Hayes, I mentioned, were just some of the notable names on waivers. I don't oh, see the Killian magic. Hayes, that sounds like a good Irish lad. I'm sure yeah. you'd like to see him on the squad. He uh, is I think Oladipo is a, is a possibility, French. right? Because he checks some boxes of what we're looking for. He's a veteran. He's yeah done some things i mean i just don't know if his knees he's nothing. like he hasn't played in a minute man like he had some knee surgeries and i just don't think he has yeah. anything left to give well i wonder that about our bench sometimes so yeah I mean, that's fair <laughs> at least if i knew he was healthy and he was in there that he's going to produce at a high level but mm-hmm. yeah i don't think we really need to do it. i think there's this time of year right every year where nba fans you get to the trade deadline everybody's talking People are excited. If your team's one of the top teams, you're not. You're like, maybe we'll add a little piece that'll get us going. If you're in the middle, you're. It, every team's fans can get involved because big changes right. to the landscape can happen. Mm-hmm. But when you do nothing, everybody seems like it's, uh, you know, like, hey, no, it's the deadline, right? But like, uh, it doesn't always need to be shifty and move around. And sometimes people make panic moves at the deadline, and it's not necessarily always necessary. And I think it's one of those things that that's what happens with this slow build. We've been talking about it for the entirety of this podcast of like, yes, we're building something. It's going to take a while. It's not one of those things that you're going to be able to watch grow physically. You're going to have to like play back the video and watch it grow slow over time. And when you speed up that video time lapse, so like you you don't need to have it be done this trade deadline and Mm -hmm. the magic were smart by not over triggering or just making a move so that we can make sure we guarantee a playoff spot. You know what I mean? They stood packed to what they've done because it's been successful so far. So I like that. They just kind of stayed with that and you forget how important team chemistry is to a young team. Right. And this team has a couple of veteran guys that have just been with the team all year. And if you bring another guy in at the deadline, that could be the, if it doesn't, if it, Italy, if it's a coin flip, whether they're going to work with the boys, mm-hmm. why get off course of still on course to make the playoffs. Right. So I'm okay with it. I it really doesn't bother me that much. I understand people want that fresh guy to come in, right? If you're playing the video game, you're doing a team, you're like, I got to make some trade. I got to get at least one new guy for like the bench just to like freshen it up because you've played 50 games and you're like, I want to see a new guy out there, but it doesn't, it's not always necessary. So I think that's the case here. Too much joystick, joystick jockeying. Mm-hmm. 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 Ah. I don't know why you brought that term to me. I, I've I, I've jostled a joystick or two in my time. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree, Peach. I'm not going to add anything more. I'm just going to ask you, second cousins, what are your reactions here at the trade deadline? Were there any players moved that you really wanted to see in the pinstripes for Orlando? Or are you happy, as we've said, staying pat? The goal is playoffs. 
That's where we are right now, baby. Everyone's getting healthy right now. Knock on wood for that. Let's stay healthy. Let's continue to grow, continue some of the trends we've seen in the shooting as we move here into the second half of the year and into the All-Star break. Peach, uh, next time you see us out there, Second Cousins, Peach and I, we're going to be together. I'm coming down to Dallas, sir. It's going to get weird. Oh, that's Austin. Shit, Court- no. Never mind. It's Court Cousins cool. U.S. Tour starts next week when you're here in Dallas. And then in March, we're going to be in Florida for Court Cousins Night. Check that out. Get some tickets and come join us down there. And then, ooh, I think it's July. I'll be back in the Nutmeg State for your wedding. So it's going ooh, on. It's going to be a all right. Big, big few months ahead. I can't wait to get down there, man. I'll see you soon. Love you. Peace out, everybody. Love you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for coming, everybody.